Hello there, and welcome to this video on how to accompany a singer. I'm going to use Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas by way of request. I have a whole tutorial on that piece, card, in the description box below, along with some other goodies related to this video. This doesn't need to be a long one today. I'm just going to show you uh, an approach to how to practice um, your technique if there's just a singer available. Now, of course, if there's more people in the trio, that doesn't make any sense. If there's more people in the band, uh, you'll have to give way to them. One of the first rules of playing with other people, even if it's just one singer, is space. Let them do what they do. If there's a bass player, don't do too many walking bass lines. It just doesn't work. If there's a guitarist, sort of avoid too many chords around here, because a guitarist is doing that. If there's a singer, which is where we're on, don't duplicate the melody. You can maybe sort of harmonize it, like in this song, I'll demonstrate that point a bit later, but you can play the melody using other notes sometimes, but even then, not too much. So let's just uh, get on with this and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Likes, comments, subscriptions, always welcome. Have a look at my books, blog, Patreon podcasts, and new playlists. And again, have a look in the description box below for lots of other goodies. Now, uh, have yourself a merry little Christmas. At the time of recording, it's uh, just started into October, so maybe a good time to get to prepared for the Christmas repertoire. I have some videos on uh, Christmas songs. You can easily find those. I'll put some below, of course. Now, uh, first of all, you have to know the song very well. It might sound very obvious, but you need to know the chords perfectly. So I'll just quickly run through the chords numerically. We're in the key of C, which was the key requested, but it doesn't matter what the key is. Because you know your master, because you know your major scales, and you're going to master this chord progression, and you know the song on your internal jukebox, it will be easy to do this in any key, but I will stay in the key of C. Now, the chord progression is 1, 6, 2, 5, 1, 6, 2, 5, 1. How unsurprising is that? So it doesn't even have to be in the key of C. It doesn't even have to be the song, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, because the 1, 6, 2, 5, 1 is the chord progression in jazz. And, you know, 90 plus percent of songs are written on that chord progression. So we can almost forget the song, but I'll highlight the melody a little bit. So it basically goes like this, that first part. Notice my left hand is playing 1, 6, 2, 5, 1 on the 2 now, the D. And then we go to the next part. So 1, 6, 2, 5, 1 is a nice way actually to begin learning how to accompany a singer. Uh, how do you do that? First of all, get used to playing the same chord with two hands in the same position. Don't worry about inversions, just get used to playing one chord in two hands in two or three, maybe just start with two, different places. So two octaves each, in other words. So you're going to play your C major 7 chord in both hands. Now there's many ways you can do that. You can do it like I'm just doing it now, just getting used to doing like this because you need to understand that there is no difference between left and right hand. It's just the chord that needs to be played anywhere on the piano. So, do it like this if you want. In two different places. I'm using a bit of pedal for a bit of colour. Or, or no pedal. Just get used to playing that chord. But the whole progression, one, six, two, five, one. So. Again, let's do it down here. So that's your first exercise to do. And I do recommend, although the song is in the key of C, I recommend getting used to doing that in different keys by going around the cycle of fourths as your new root. So in the key of F, we would go one, six, two, five, one, exactly the same as we did in C, and just get used again to playing that. There's your chord one. 6 on the D minor 7 and then 2 is G minor 7 C7 just get used to doing that and also notice that I'm rolling ascending it's quick but it's happening it's like that like that that sounds very nice so I'll go back to the key of C 1 6 2 5 one. Now what we've actually done by doing that exercise is that's one of the main ways of accompanying a player. You're not a singer. You're not disturbing the bass and you're not disturbing the melody line. Maybe a guitarist would get a bit annoyed, but I'm assuming that uh, you're just going to be accompanying a singer. So that is, a very, that is one way to do it. If you imagine the melody, I'll try, imagine my left hand is doing it with the right hand. 
but I'll just do the right hand as if it's a singer. Uh, it's a melody. So you would be doing that with two hands as a singer singing. That sounds very nice. It's a nice accompaniment. Now the next thing to do is to learn how to let the bass do something, but without the right hand. And that is just, you might call that a rhythmic accompaniment. So we'd have a C, and it's down to you as to how you would play the bass, but basically you might do something like this. So I'm playing an octave and then together. So there's some kind of rhythmic elements going on, but it's also following the chord progression. And notice how I'm ascending the octave. You can, of course, descend the octave. And again, this is something that you can just do while the singer is singing, perhaps in the introduction. You don't actually need to play any chords just yet. You could just begin like this. And the melody comes in. It's just quite a nice accompaniment on its own. So there's, there's two things that you should be mastering. Chords with both hands, irrelevant of the hand, irrelevant of the chord type. And then just the left hand doing this kind of open octave and then together. It's steadiness in execution, which is very important. You want to keep, be somewhat metronomic. Uh, but you're also being melodic as well. So you're being metronomic and melodic in the left hand. And then of course you'd like to try and bring those together. How might you do that? A lot of it's going to be how you naturally play uh, you. Play you. But uh, I'll just demonstrate what's possible. Something like this. So you play the chord and you might go something like this. Just a chord, nothing else fancy. I'm building up. Something like that. So I'm playing a chord on one and three. One and three. Like that. And the bass, this is something that I, I won't even waste my time trying to explain in words because you have to feel it. I'll just do it again a bit more slowly. That's just how I'm getting a little bit more movement in my left hand than I did in the exercise, which was a strict octave open octave, closed octave thing, ascending or descending, ascending or descending. I'm just kind of getting a bit of movement however I want to. So that's how I went, like that and like that I think. I'm moving them around a bit. Sometimes it's octave, sometimes it's descending, sometimes it's ascending, and sometimes I'll play the same note twice. It's whatever comes out naturally in your rhythmic uh, attempts, let's call it. So you'll, you'll want to put those together. And again, it's in the key of F, because people like it when I change keys. So something like that. And of course you can watch it slowly, watch it back, and you'll get the idea. Play around with that, it's going to be very helpful. Uh, the next thing is where you uh, fill in some of the silence in the right hand. So, if you understand, there are three sections on the piano. Bass, chordy area, melody area, generally speaking. Of course, you can do a bit of a, you can do uh, chords up here, you can do chords to some chords down here if they don't sound too muddy. You can even do melodic lines in the bass. You know, you can mix it all up a bit, but generally it's bass, melody, uh, bass chords, melody. So when you're doing a melody fill in, you'll either be playing a chord, or you'll be doing a bass line. It's your choice. So I did that over the 6251 again, and uh, so that's something that you'll like to do. So not all the time, because you're accompanying. It's not about you improvising. So you'll do something where you're maybe, you've got a bit of rhythm going. With that nice octave thing in the left hand going. And then sometimes you might just have to play, let's do it on the, uh, I'll do it on the two. I'll just do it on the two chord, on the D minor seven, just to bring it in slowly. So imagine the singing. Just imagine that's happening. Now here, I might just play 
in the left hand, but my right hand might play a little improvisation. Now, the main thing to do with improvising is to play the notes of the chord with some chromatic connections in between. So the notes of the chord are D, F, A, and C. You, you can do it here or up here. It kind of might sound quite nice down here, if the singer's singing around the middle especially, something on top. And you might just kind of do anything, just literally playing the notes of the chord. Let me, let me just do that first. As you go into the chord, so just, I just did that. Or you might play something which is a bit more interesting, where you might go up and down chromatically, but to the next melody note, not melody note, note of the chord. So. And then bring in the chord a little bit later on beat four, for example. Of course, you can do any, you don't have to start on the D, you can start on any of the notes of the chord and do them anyway. You might just go, you might just do that. And then come in, continue with the G7 and back to C again. That was quite a nice little thing. Onto the G7 chord, so I did that there. You could do anything else. Just play the first three notes there. Let me just do it on a few other chords so you get the idea. One thing I might say in the left hand before I start doing it naturally, because I'm really trying to stop myself from doing it, is the chromatic drop, the semitone drop in the bass. So you're playing C, and when I get to A, whether it's down or up, I'll go chromatically from the B flat to the A or from the A flat to the A. It's my choice, or your choice. Get used to doing that because it sounds really nice. See how I'm just, I've got a bit of stride going now, so I'm doing a bass note with my left hand and the chord, whatever it might be, with my left hand as well. With that nice semitone drop, low chord, low chord, bass, chord, no bass, chord. So you can mix it up a bit, mix and match a little bit. I think you'll find that quite beneficial and enjoyable. And again, in the right, in the right hand, you're sometimes playing a chord or you're playing these little fiddly bits. Now, sometimes I was playing. I was playing the fiddly bits, so let's say, but with my index finger, because we're in the key of C, it's easier on the white notes, uh, but you're just, I'm, my thumb is aiming for the note of the chord, but my index finger is keeping a kind of third separation. So sometimes it will be a major third, sometimes it will be a minor third, major, minor, doesn't really matter too much at this level, but you're generally just going to play notes of the chord like that, which is quite a pretty thing to do under the singer. So. Imagine she, for example, is singing. Now, a little bit to say here is um, fill in, the turnaround. There's a part at the end of that song, or the end of the section. Here, you can land on the C or the E, but the point is you've got all this. Until you get to the next part, although I think that actually it goes into the key of F there, but whatever, the point is that you have a turnaround to do. Now, during that place, you can keep doing that left hand, but the right hand can either can do exactly what I've just said, but you've got more filling in to do. So you can be a bit more free. What I was saying about doing this is probably something good for the turnaround. So let's just go on three, six, two, five, one. E, A, D, G, C. And then she'll start singing again.
So I'm just sometimes touching on the melody, but sometimes not. And earlier I said I was going to talk about harmonising it. The idea is that if she's singing well, from the beginning, this part, you could do that on any other note above and experiment, see what, uh, I say she just as a singer for example, to see what they like. Uh, might be safe to do a fourth apart, so like this, just for something a bit more interesting. So if you imagine that this is the singer and this is you, uh, well, I'm talking about it from going down because you wouldn't do it all the time. Here. Might sound something interesting. So you're playing the same melody, but a fourth up. It's just an idea, something to do. You could do it with thirds, minor thirds. Experiment with that kind of harmonizing the singing voice, um, which is quite a nice thing to do. Uh, so I think I'm going to round it off there. I don't want to be too long. So the idea is to get used to that bass movement, whatever the chord is, up and down or together, the semitone drop, the both hands playing the same chord, just to stop thinking that the left hand does this and the right hand does that, because the left hand also can play a melody. It can do a walking bass. The right hand can play chords and melody. So don't get too isolated in the ideas that the left only does this and the right only does that, because it's not true. Uh, so you've got your chords, your bass thing, and then put your bass with the chords, uh, and then fill in using notes of the chords, whether you're playing a chord or a bass note, just sounds nice. And you can just get, you can pr practice this as a fun thing around that 6251 progression. Uh, see the chromatic connections. I went from a D, which is in the G chord, to the B, which is the major seven in the C chord. Then I play a chord, a chord, excuse me. You just keep going on like this forever. Bit of chord together, no melody. And then a bit up here. Uh, we get the rhythm. You get the idea. A singer will appreciate all of that. So you need to keep your steadiness and uh, the singer will follow your, your metronomic execution, which when I say metronomic, doesn't mean dry and bland. It means uh, humanly metronomically steady. If there's no metronome and you're just playing freestyle, then arpeggios are very nice. So she, she may sing the melody, and you can just come in later with the chord as an arpeggio, perhaps. She might go, and then you play the last two chords, and then play the first chord. She'll sing, and you'll go two, five, three. Then she'll sing. So you can have a kind of um, like a tennis game between each other, really. She'll sing, you'll play. You'll play, she'll sing. That's when it's not metronomic. That can be kind of fun. And you can do that yourself as well as a practice. playing in different times. The melody and then the chords are kind of delayed a bit on purpose. It's just a bit of fun to do. Uh, I'll stop it there and hopefully that has been of use to any song, not just have yourself a merry little Christmas. Uh, there you go. As always, likes, comments, subscriptions uh, always welcome. Have a look at my books, blog, Patreon, podcast, new playlists, and I'll see you in the next video. All the best and bye for now.